In this video we are going to look at using knives at Forest School. Now there are a variety of knives that we can use. Um, some of them are more appropriate for younger children and others, perhaps as children get older, more experienced and more confident. Knives are something that we do need to be really careful with. Um, so make sure that we're following the general tool procedures when we're using the tools, including the safety bubble, so the arm's length plus the length of the tool making sure that we're minimising the amount of moving around that we're doing. I tend to ask the children to sit down and get themselves settled before I then hand out the knives. And also with knives we're thinking about the ratio, so how many children are going to be using the knives and how many adults do you need to support that. Um, that depends on your children and the ability and confidence of you as a practitioner and of the children that you're working with, but it's very important to think about that before you start. So we've got three different knives here. We have a very simple butter knife, which is a really good way of starting the procedure of using knives with very young children. Then we've got an opinel knife, which is a folding knife. And then we've got a sheath knife, which is a fixed blade knife. They all do the same job, but they are for slightly different age groups or different purposes. We'll start with the butter knife. Using the butter knife is a really good way of introducing tool work and knife work to young children but it only works on certain types of wood so you want something that's really fresh and generally the rule is when we're using wood in the forest we try to use fresh wood, green wood that's just been cut because we find that it's much easier to work with and, and it will be much more achievable for the children. The technique is exactly the same as using the, the slightly larger knives, a uh, glove on the non-working hand again um, and whenever we're using knives we teach that children sit with their knees together and they're going to use the knife to the side of their body. So inside your legs here we've got big veins, arteries which take blood down to your legs. We don't want to be cutting anywhere near these. So the safest way is legs together like a table and then work into the side of your body. Again glove on the non-working hand um, and the knife is held in a nice strong fist grip. So thinking about your working bubble, your safety bubble, making sure there's no one um, around you and then using the knife away from you. So again with very young children you can support them, you can be with them maybe hand over hand just to make sure that they've got the technique and this can be done with very young children as young as three or four even if you support them and, um, and make sure that the safety rules are, are there in place. So we're always working away from ourselves. This is good practice when we come onto the sharper knives, just to make sure that if you do slip, it's not going to come back towards your body. And you can see that my gloved hand is on the outside of my leg, which again means that there's no chance that you can come back towards your leg and end up cutting the outside of your leg. And that is a really achievable way of introducing knife work to young children. When we come on to the slightly sharper knives. Um, we're going to change to a piece of hazel. So hazel is a lovely wood to use, it's nice and straight, useful for all kinds of projects when we're in the woods uh, and again it's achievable, the children can manage this themselves. And you'll notice that I've cut my piece of hazel into about a metre which means it's easy to hold. So we don't want anything too long, we also don't want anything too short because it becomes very fiddly. So about a metre is a good length to start with. So the same procedure applies, legs together, glove on the non-working hand, being aware of the working space around you. Um, and we'll just quickly introduce both of these knives. So the folding knives have a locking mechanism on the handle. These are Opinel, you can get other brands. Um, you need to make sure that that is open before you open the knife. And then you can carefully fold the knife, the blade into place and then make sure that the blade is locked into place before you use it. And then the glove goes back on the non-working hand. Very important that you're always sat down or kneeling down with the knife, not standing up, not moving around the woodland. And that action is very much the same, just away from your body, working down towards the end. You'll notice that this knife has a rounded end it's just as sharp, the cutting edge is just as sharp, the rounded end is just to make it slightly safer in terms of uh, 
how it looks and also to minimize the risk of, of uh, sort of stabbing or, or point, point wounds from the end of the knife. The other technique that you can use if you want a more detailed cut, so for example to sharpen or to round off the end of your piece of hazel, this thumb can come closer to the end of the wood and your gloved hand, the thumb can push on the back of the blade which gives you a much more controlled cut if you want to do more detailed work. Something that takes a little bit of practice but again you can notice that the blade is pointing away from me so I'm always keeping that blade away from myself in case I slip. And then when we finished making sure that the lock is open, carefully folding the knife away, watch your fingers and then locked again before it goes back in the tool bag. So that is a folding knife. Finally we come on to the sheath knife. You can get lots of different brands, lots of different designs, but they all come in a, in a plastic or a protective sheath which keeps them safe when they're not being used. Um, when you open a sheath knife it has this little plastic lug here which you can push with your thumb. So rather than holding it and pulling the knife out, you making sure that you hold the sheath away from the blade and you push with your thumb to release the knife. And when we get the knife out of the sheath, again sitting down is really important. You can notice that this um, has got a point on the end, this knife, um, and the glove goes straight on the non-working hand and the technique is exactly the same. So we're using the knife away from our body, pushing down with a fairly straight arm so you can see that I'm kind of leaning on the knife to get those nice long cuts and taking that bark off. The other way to do this one, um, if you need a little bit more pressure, is to actually rest the end of your piece of wood on a log and you can push then towards the end, which gives you a little bit more um, force. You can, add, uh, you can put a bit more force on the knife. Again, when you've finished, straight back into the sheath and you'll notice that there's a little click when you come to put these away and that means that the knife's not going to fall out. So you need to make sure that it's in the right way around, nice and clean, and it goes straight back in the tool bag. When we are transporting knives or moving around with knives, the safest way to do it is in the tool bag so that they're locked away, sealed away before we move them. If you do need to move with a knife in the woodland, then the key thing again is making sure that they're covered or that they're locked and that the blade is pointing downwards. So stand up and blade's pointing downwards by the side of our body, slowly moving around the woodland if we need to move with the knives. Um, and then as soon as possible, we're sitting down again or kneeling down before we take the knife out of its sheath. So that's a, a general introduction to knife work. There are obviously lots of different techniques. The key things to remember are legs together, working to the side, always pushing away from yourself.